Look at that. How cool is this, huh? Make, fix, grow, cook. Garden fork. This is our new file cabinet evaporator, Evaporator 2.0. I've been wanting to make a um, kind of a detailed how I built it, put it together kind of video, but I haven't got all the parts together yet and it's getting late and I was like, I promised you guys a peek at this. Well, I promised you a tour. So I'll give you a brief tour now and after I get all the stuff that I want to hook up to it hooked up, that's water vapor, um, we'll do another video, all right? It was two degrees last night, it was five degrees when I woke up, it's 10 degrees now. So that means that almost all my sap buckets and my sap storage tanks are frozen solid. I had some liquid sap around uh, that I could get out of some of the centers. Yeah, there's some sap, liquid sap in there, but most of that is rock solid. So we're doing a short boil today, and then in the days to come, that sap will unfreeze and then I can boil it. There is this point in previous videos you'll see where I pull ice out of the buckets, you know, where we're tapping a tree, and then we look at the bucket and there's a bunch of ice in it, you can kind of pull it out. That's totally okay. When it's frozen solid, um, you need that liquid. So one thing that you can do to preheat your sap, it doesn't have to be icy sap like this, is just go to the dollar store and buy the widest bowls you can, and I sit them right on top of the evaporator, and this back half of the evaporator is the hottest part. It's cooler here near the front, near the door. And um, this will get up to 70 degrees. So this is an example of one of my uh, five gallon buckets of just how solid the sap has frozen. Usually if you have like an inch ring around, that's totally okay to toss that because what's that, the amount of sugar in that outer ring is fairly low. Um, but when it's this thick, I would melt most of this um, and boil it. But what do you guys think? You guys that are sap experts, I'd like to hear from you in the comments below because I always learn from you guys. But I got a lot of this. I got solid ice in my buckets. I usually have this uh, little float dribble valve thing connected right here, but it's so cold out that my kind of proof of concept gravity fed feed here, the line freezes. I defrost the line, I turn it on, and it's because it's 10 degrees and the wind is whipping, this line freezes. In a perfect world, will be um, my sap storage tank is up here. It's a pallet tote tank, and we'll gravity feed down here to a float valve here, and we'll be good to go. I want to say something about the actual evaporator tray, which is a big thumbs up. Um, for information about buying this, go to gardenfork.tv slash evaporator. And that'll have all the info about the fella who made this for me. Did a very good job at a very affordable price. Um, man, look at that vapor coming off. Nice, huh? Chimney's working well. File cabinet's working well. Couple things I've learned. I put a turbo fan on here. This is the bathroom fan. And I put a, um, that's not to building code. Okay, don't build it like that. But that's a bathroom fan that goes in to here. And I'm trying to figure out the optimal uh, speed of the fan. And also how this thing is usually, I usually have found that this is opener. I don't close this completely. I keep it slightly open and that burns pretty darn nicely in there. Look at that. That's really, really cool. This is completely fun. Um, something to do in February and March. It's the second week of March right now. When it gets really cold, your sap will stop and you think, oh, the trees are done, and then it's gonna get really warm. It was like, cold warm and now it's really cold it's gonna get warm again last week it was up in the 60s and I'm like that's it the trees have stopped running they cooled off and then boom the, tr the tree sap ran again so don't pull your lines just yet um, that's just that's not smoke by the way that's um, water vapor that smells like maple syrup you will not be able to boil off you won't be able to finish your syrup on this pan you're gonna get it to 
maybe 212, 213 degrees. Then you're going to pour it off with this really cool valve. Um, and then you will finish it off either in the kitchen or on a deep fried uh, turkey rig like this one here. So that is where I will finish everything off at. That's my... You get a lot of containers when you make maple syrup. You have kind of a vast collection of stuff. I mean, the vapor is pretty vapory, but you can see here it's boiling really nicely. Fire's doing well. The little blower rig is doing well. There's, I put fire brick on the sides, and we'll talk about that more when we do the build video, but that seems to be working well because last year, the file cabinet was so hot you couldn't stand next to it, and now you can stand next to it, and it's um, it's actually kind of toasty warm. Oh look, a much better sap transport tank. So you watched our previous uh, maple syrup fiasco video. Something happened. Um, this is really great. The only problem is it's frozen solid, much like my other tank here. So this is my big storage tank. But uh, it's frozen as well. So we're going to end the boil for today. But I always learn from you guys. If you have some suggestions or questions, let me know in the show notes here. And if you want to watch more of our Meeple Cert videos, there should be like a thing to click on right about here or below the video, some more info. All sorts of links to like Garden Forky stuff and all about me as well. All right? So always make it a great day and let me know what you think. See you.